Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on your, your time zone. My name is Lucia Jeltema. I will be the session chair today. Um, today, we'll have Chang Ho talk about knowledge graph data modeling with Terminus to be. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to raise them in the chat and I can read them out loud. Please, Chang, take it away. Yeah, hello. So um, I'm Czech. And um, so, uh, like I said, I am kind of quite happy to have some interactivity. So if you have questions, feel free to type in the chat at any point. If I see it, I will try to um, answer your questions. Um, so this workshop, it will be structured as, first of all, there'll be a lot of information about data modeling. I guess um, most of you are interested because you're here. Um, and then we'll have some hand-on uh, exercise that. Well, I think since we are now like remote, so I would just do it and then you can see how I do it. And then um, you can, you know, um, follow along. If you have any questions, again, I'll put it in the chat. Um, yeah, so I guess this is how we would do it. <laughs> so um, in the middle, there will be a break, a technical break for people to, you know, get maybe get refreshed or um, just make sure your setup is okay. So there'll be time for that. But uh, it's always, you know, depends because um, sometimes workshop goes very quickly, sometimes workshop goes slowly because people ask questions. So we'll see how, uh, what we can do. But um, anyway, I would point you to some kind of more resources at the end anyway, so you could uh, try it out yourself and um, you also know where to find me if you have questions. So uh, let's get started. So um, I'm Chuck. Uh, I'm a developer relations lead at Terminus DB. So Terminus DB is the uh, open source graph database that we will we'll be using today. So um, again, like emphasize on open source. So uh, it's not, you know, something that you have to pay for. Um, it's all, you know, it's, uh, as long as you have Docker, you can get the Docker image and uh, have it running. So, um, so yeah, it's just, well, my title is funny. It's just that I was a data scientist like most of you, but right now I'm just kind of, um, you know, help developing the tool, get feedback from people, um, you know, work with the engineering team and then, you know, also create tutorials so people can start using the tool. Um, I love open source software. Um, that's why when I um, first know about Terminus DB, it's an open source tool. That's why I'm really, really happy to uh, join them and work with them. Um, love Python, like all of you. Uh, so also, uh, before I start, there's this Discord link. Uh, so Discord is a, a messenger thing, kind of like Slack. So uh, we have a community there that everybody can join. Uh, the team will be there as well. Um, so it's just like Slack that you can ask questions there. Um, also, that's my Twitter. So feel free to, uh, you know, send me messages. My inbox is open. But if you message me, please kind of let me know why you're messaging me because, uh, you know, sometimes more on Discord that I got people just say hi. And then I was like, so, okay, what do you want? Like, <laughs> do, do I have to spend like five minutes to talk to you to find out what do you want? So, uh, yeah, it's just a little thing. Um, so in this workshop, um, you will know that, like you will learn a lot of things. So um, some of them is about um, how you can think from what you're used to, for example, a relational database, how you can kind of represent the data in a different way um, is in a semantic knowledge graph way. So a lot of like fancy terms here, but I will break it down for you in this um, kind of lecture, I would say, or, or tutorial workshop, whatever. Um, and then, um, so what, like how a semantic knowledge graph is different from a relational database? I would say the comparison is more like 3D and 2D, but I'll give you more detailed explanation in a sec. Um, so also we will learn how to um, construct a knowledge graph, what's the component of a knowledge graph and why it makes it so special, right? Um, how to create it, how to, how to model it. We will have hands-on exercise at the end, so which is great. Um, I assume everybody have some knowledge of Python to follow along at the exercise at the end. But even if you are not confident to use Python yet, or uh, there's a little bit of yeah. hiccups because of uh, some Python questions, then um, don't worry. Uh, you would at least be able to follow along for the whole kind of, um, you know, how to think about modeling in knowledge graph and you know, in the lecture part, you will be able to follow along. It's just that um, for the hands-on exercise, I would assume some Python knowledge. And if you're struggling, like I said, I would 
point you to some resources at the end, which you can take your time to follow along afterwards. And, you know, you can always ask questions on Discord as well. So, um, yeah, also, uh, Terminus TV, there's some history about it. Um, before, it was just purely everything need to be modeled with um, more or less in RDF format, which again, like new terms, I will explain in a bit. Uh, but right now we have a new thing called a document API, which makes uh, modeling much easier. Um, so all of these details, I would, I would just kind of explain uh, later. Um, so one thing you have to notice is that like we are using a new version. So um, this new document API only come in at version 10. <laughs> we have jumped a few versions just to make sure that everybody knows that is different. So um, yeah, document API only available from version 10. So make sure that the, the image that you get from Terminus DB uh, on Docker, let's say it will be uh, at least version 10 or above. Uh, Python client, again, version 10 or above, they would work together perfectly. Um, okay. so. Yeah, and like I said, anybody can just, you know, um, follow the lecture. It won't assume that you know anything. Maybe I would assume that you have seen some kind of relational, relational database or CSV, which I guess is quite popular. Uh, if you don't know what is the CSV, <laughs> then uh, ask in the, in the chat. I am happy to uh, give you a brief explanation. But I, I guess it's quite common to people know what is the CSV um, or what is the Excel spreadsheet. Um, and that's the only thing I assume that you would know. Um, and then we, when we go to the coding part, the hands-on exercise, that would be um, Python coding. So I assume that you, you can do Python coding, um, just very basic knowledge. Uh, if you don't, then don't worry. Uh, you can, you know, Python is very beginner friendly. Um, I'm sure that you can find resources to learn how to do Py like use Python. And then you can come back to the tutorial, which, uh, uh, will be available online. The, the code will be available online, all this stuff, so you can follow along afterwards. Um, so this is normally how I would do it. I know that we don't have that much time today. So um, this is just a brief idea. So the, the time will, will be loosely um, following along. Um, I think for hands-on training, I'll just cut, cut it shorter because if we are in the same room together, then I can just let you all try uh, yourself and if you have questions i can come along you know standing next to you and we'll figure it out but unfortunately uh, we have to do this remotely so um yeah i would just uh, you know do a demo like slowly so everybody can try following along so but even if you you know uh, struggling or anything like feel free to ask questions i'm happy to like you know sometimes you only realize that oh i have a question when you try it right so feel free to ask a question at any point um so yeah, so that's basically it. Um, so uh, let me take a sip of coffee and then I'll start explaining what is Terminus DB, what is semantic graph and all this stuff, okay. Okay, so what is Terminus DB? So uh, I've mentioned many times already, uh, it's open source graph database. So um, two of the most important aspect is open source, I've explained, it's free, it's uh, open, you can see the source code. It's not written in Python though, it's written in, um, uh, Oh, slip my tongue, um, written in Prolog, which is, uh, some of you may heard about it. So it's a very interesting programming language. It's almost like a query. <laughs> so everything is almost like a SQL query or something. It's very, very interesting. If you're interested, you know, you can learn it yourself. I think the community is very happy to teach people Prolog. If you met someone who loved Prolog, they'll be like, oh my God, join us. You know, <laughs> It's almost like a couch. They would be like, oh, come on, I I'll teach you Prolog and stuff. It's, Lovely. Um, so yeah, like so it's written in Prolog and also Rust. So Rust again is uh, is you know it's a, diff a language different from Python. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can see the source code if you're interested. Uh, so we have JavaScript client and the Python client. They all both uh, open source. Code is hosted on GitHub. Feel free to have a look. Um, so it's a knowledge graph database. So um, I think today we we're focusing on talking about graph database. Um, how is it different from uh, a, like SQL base or relational database, right? Um, and also because of that, we can um, do revision control uh, because um, the design of Terminus DB is uh, graph based. So, is, uh, so if 
those of you who have used Git before, if you poke around at like some kind of Git operation and a lot of time you will come across an illustration that is very graph-like. So um, with, you know, with that design that Terminus DB is graph-based, so it's, it, it can do revision control, it can do things like Git, so which is quite amazing, I would say. Um, so collaboration is very easy. You can, um, you know, uh, like if you have used Git before, you know that both of you can work on different things and at the end you combine it together or you can see what's the difference, you know, and how you can, you know, um, uh, you know, roll back if someone made a mistake or something like that. So, which is great. Um, also manage access uh, is working in progress right now, but Oh, the, the, um, so yeah, we have already a, a develop a version that uh, people can, you know, can have a team and then people uh, you invite people to join your team and then uh, collaborate on the same database. Um, that uh, we just did an internal uh, hackathon yesterday and then it's proven working, but uh, we haven't uh, put it in production yet. So, um, but that's something that uh, is uh, going to be uh, available. <laughs> so um, it's quite cool. Um, so uh, a semantic graph. So a semantic graph, I would say that, why do we need that? Why we, we are happy with SQL? Why do we have to learn something new and you know, put data in this semantic graph structure? Okay, uh, why you're not happy with you know, data tables? <laughs> so, um, so I think uh, for those of you who work um, as a data scientist or who have been working with data people, you have heard the term data lake quite a lot. So usually data lake is um, kind of uh, describing things like um, S3 buckets, uh, for example, or uh, Google, uh, Google have similar, I forgot the name, but like Google have, uh, you know, their, their version of that as well. So uh, what it is, is that you just dump everything, right? Like a Google Drive is kind of like that as well. So you dump everything in, in this lake. Um, so there's lots of data. There could be anything. There could be, uh, you know, a, a file that is, could be a flat, flat file. So it's kind of like text. It could be a JSON. It could be a CSV. Uh, it could be uh, some kind of, um, some kind of any kind of binary file and more complicated stuff, a game, <laughs> let's say, um, or video. So um, it's a big uh, it's just just something you can put it there and then you will give back a link to access the data. So um, yeah, people are suggesting that, oh yeah, there's Slack channel and also there we people can share materials. Yes, definitely, please go ahead to do it. So in this data lake, all you have is a link to get back your data. Um, there isn't much about it. Uh, there isn't, you know, um, much thing you can do about it. So, um, but, uh, so that's that's the extreme end of, of how you can store data without any structure. It's totally flexible. You can put anything there um, versus uh, a CSV or let's say, um, let's say Google spreadsheet. Okay, everybody use Google spreadsheet. So um, everything needs to be, you know, put in a table format. You know, you have columns, you have rows, um, you may have an extra sheet if you want to, um, but everything needs to be, Flat. So imagine if you have something uh, complex, you know, uh, for example, um, we have a structure, uh, I'll show you later, like that uh, is a structure of a company, someone's managing someone, then you have, you know, um, you will have a nested relation because, well, uh, someone's managing this person and then, but this manager also have their own properties, right? So um, it's not as straightforward as um, you can, you know, as, as it is just, for example, a date of birth is just a date, uh, a name is just a string. So it's not like, uh, you know, a, a person. What, so what is a person? A person, well, a person's name, is, is that equal to a person? No, a person is more than that. They will have the age, they will have the, let's say their picture or their, you know, uh, when they join the company, all this stuff. So, um, so it's complex. Some of the objects in, in the world is complex and you can't just describe it like a string or like, you know, a number, something very plain. Um, so you need this kind of data lake with a structure. So um, that's why we have a semantic graph. Then that is uh, very flexible. You can describe almost everything, but with a structure, with some format that is not just a link 
of something and you don't know what this link represent. Is it a picture? Is it a video? Is it a, a CSV? You don't know. Um, so uh, I already explained open source, uh, community driven. So that's why we love all of you. <laughs> Please join our Discord. Um, and graph database is very flexible. It's um, built triple. So we'll come across triple in a, in a bit. So everything is described in triples, which is very small thing, but very powerful thing. Um, and um, so the advantage of that is that, you know, for example, uh, so how we can kind of um, not hack, but like how we can kind of represent a person, for example, in a relational database, usually you give them an ID, right? You're giving them a unique ID and then you can kind of, you know, maybe you can store everybody in another the table uh, or spreadsheet and then, that would have all the things describing this person, the name, the title, the like where they live, whatever, whatever. Um, and then you can find this person by the ID. So there will be a lot of joints, a lot of aggregation, uh, for example. And uh, so for those of you who have used SQL, you understand what I mean. Uh, SQL can be very long to just do something so very simple. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so that's, that's why. Um, Re revision control already talked a little bit about it. So every time you hear revision control, you can think of, I'm just talking about Git, uh, to, the easiest to understand. So you don't have to, you know, uh, remember new terms. So it's just, just, just really like for now, just think it's equivalent to Git, right? Um, you can do branching, merging, um, rollback, reset, all, the, all this kind of stuff. Um, okay. So um, new thing, uh, now we have, uh, so, uh, before I described that, you know, it's a data lake with structure, right? So the structure is provided by something called schema. So schema will describe how the data should look like. So you know what to expect. It's not like finding a needle in a haystack. It's that is, you know, you don't know what you're looking for or what you're looking at if you're given a link. If you're given a link, that is where this, uh, let's say, person object is sitting because you can always look at the schema and see what a person object should structure. They should have a name, they should have a title, they should have an age, all this stuff. So then you know what you're expecting. Um, and then document API is very good. Uh, you would see it later. Um, Python client, um, so it's good for everybody because we all love Python. Um, with Python client, you just make um, a lot of operation quite easy. Um, so right now, since I've been developing for uh, more than a year now, so it start from very very basic that you it's just a wrapper uh, wrapping the, the the API call you know that normally you would do it with for example request or this and now it's wrapped in a client so operation are more straightforward and easy to understand and then later I develop like more kind of a handy tool. There's a command line tool now that you could easily um, get your schema back. Uh, you know, you can inspect your schema in the Python kind of format. You can put it back uh, in the database kind of easily. So um, all will come into pieces when I demonstrate it. Um, also, there is um, so this this thing is a bit tricky. I put it here because it was a thing in the past, but right now we have temporary to get down because we are. We have the new version, right? We have the document API and uh, we have to update this bit, this component, the interactive graph representation. But it was something that is loved by everybody in the past. Um, there's actually a, a, for those of you who know D3, that actually is interactive graph. So um, if you have used Bokeh, then you know, like it's kind of like Bokeh interactive. You can zoom in, zoom out. You can move the nook around. Uh, so, or you can, you know, color code them. And so, uh, it's um, it's rendered in JavaScript, so it works in Jupyter Notebook. You can export it as an HTML file, but sadly, this is temporarily not available because we have a lot to do about this new version, and then we would uh, get this up to date again, and then put it uh, make it available again. But if you want to see the demonstration, you may have to see some of our older blocks, and then you'll see it in action. So um, Terminus DB is available on Docker Hub. Uh, for those of you who want to run Terminus DB locally, I will expect you to have Docker installed on your computer. Um, so once you have Docker installed, you don't even need to know how to use Docker to use it. Um, we have a repo. Um, I don't know whether I can click on it right now. Yes, okay. We just kind of bring it back here. So uh, yeah, 
so uh, here is our uh, bootstrap repo, which um, if you uh, clone this, uh, not, not clone, like if you, uh, you can just like, you know, uh, clone it locally, like download it. Um, yeah, clone it locally or, or download whatever, like whatever you like. Um, then you can just run the script. Uh, we have a script that basically um, uh, will we'll spin up the container automatically. So <laughs> you don't even need to, know, need to know how to use Docker. Like, so... Uh, I I rarely use Docker directly because I am not in the depth of space. Um, but you know I have Docker installed, as you can see here. I have Docker, but uh, yeah, I just use that uh, Bootstrap quite often. Um, so yeah, and I guess like for those of you who uh, may be more experienced, then you may already have Docker because it's such a good tool. Um, so yeah, two uh, official clients that's working right now, Python client and JavaScript client. Um, we will be focusing on Python client because I guess um, for the demographic, more people would be uh, familiar with Python than JavaScript. Um, but that's also available like if you um, want to have, you know, integration with some kind of web application, JavaScript client will be useful. Um, yeah, so uh, I think we had at some point like someone coming to us saying they are developing a web application or website with Ruby on Rails or something. So they want a, uh, a, a Ruby kind of client and we say, oh, we don't have, but we can support you to do that because we're open source. And also um, uh, it's just, uh, you know, we have API available for any tool. So you, you can, if you want to, you can definitely develop your own client. <laughs> um, so let's continue. From here, okay. So that's the overview of uh, what what are we using today. So um, then we will go to the modeling part um, to explain what is triple, uh, what is all these like document, what is this thing that you all talk about. Um, but for that, I would need to have a few minutes to drink some coffee. Uh, for, it's also a good time now to pop in any questions, uh, like. You know, someone mentioned in chat, we have a Slack channel uh, that's available. So um, you can also, you know, uh, yeah, like put some questions there as, uh, as well. Um, yeah, installation, I would, uh, so yeah, like it's good that everybody's helping each other, but uh, I will also give you more information later after the, the lecture so you can um, install it. But right now, I think you already know that you need um, Docker, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah, in the past when I give the workshop, I talk too much and then I just start coughing, which is not good. So <laughs> I am trying to tell myself, take breaks, drink some coffee. Okay. So knowledge craft data modeling. Um like I said, the very free uh you know that the, the, you can think the atom of a knowledge graph is a triple. So uh, the minimal unit would be a triple. Sorry, I have some echo here. I don't know where it came from, but hope you can still hear me. Okay, All right. So um, there is uh, also how you can converge. Like so, I think what we may want. So what we'll do today is to convert a um. A example relational database into a graph database. So uh, also we have to know what's the difference, right? So uh, that's, we will also cover that. Uh, so like um, explaining what are these terms, objects, document, what are they? Um, are any other things that I have to know? Um, also properties. So this bit is a bit, um, I'll give you more detail about what, what are properties in a knowledge graph. But um, so, yeah, I think the most important thing is to how to um, represent data in a knowledge graph, right? How we can put, um, how we can use knowledge graph to describe anything. Um, so today, the information I got to give you, um, so in theory, you don't have to understand all of them to be able to use Terminus DB, thanks for our document API. But it's good to know this knowledge because um, when you talk to some kind of graph, enthusiasts, they would talk about RDF and all this stuff, which is, you know, quite deep. And then if you know some of these basics, you can um, talk to them about it. And it's easier to, to communicate that way if you speak the same language. So triple. So knowledge graph, um, sometimes called semantic knowledge graph, uh, they all kind of in a format that is called an RDF format. So luckily I've 
done my homework and the name is there, res uh, Resource Description Framework, so RDF. So I just say RDF most of the time, but you know, I don't in really understand what R, B, and F represent. Here you go. Um, so the smallest component, like I said, is, is a triple. So, um, so triple, as the name suggested, so it's three things. Um, so uh, that would be uh, in technical term, subject, predicate, and object. So can think of, um, uh, well, language is a bit more complicated, but if you think about it, like for example, you teach a kid a new language, um, so it won't be very complicated, or you're learning a new language, you're not making a very complex sentence, you can make very basic sentence and still kind of communicating okay. For example, um, apple is red. So this is how you can teach a kid, right? Like, you know, holding an apple is like, apple is red. So um, this is how you describe an apple with three things. So subject, predicate, object. So for example, what I'm doing now is Chuck teaches a workshop uh, or, you know, animal lovers here, a cow loves duck. So um, for, with just three things, you can have semantic, which is meaning. Um, so that's how you can construct a very, very kindergarten level, simple sentence that a three-year-old could understand. Um, so uh, can any one of you? Yes, someone already did. Uh, Claudia prepares coffee. Oh, and I love the emoji as well. Great. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, if you have any example, feel free to uh, put that in the, the chat in Zoom. And then, uh, yeah, so, so we can have joy of uh, the triples, I guess. So um, for example, uh, if you're running out of idea, you can look at here that um, uh, if you should, so imagine this is something in a, a kid's storybook. You can, you know, when you're reading it with the kid, Imagine what you would do. So, um, cow says moo, and duck says quack. You know, cow has four legs. You know, cow is smiling, something like that, right? And then, um, so this is all triple. So with all this triple, you can describe this, this picture to a kid. Um, so that's why triple is very, very small very simple, but very powerful because that's all you need to describe the world in theory. Um, so, um, so triple, yeah, can link together to make a complex uh, understanding. Like the picture that I've just shown you, you can use these kind of children-like sentence to describe it to a kid and they will understand. Um, and then, you know, this is all you need to describe a picture, right? Um, so this is very, very cool. So this is the building block of a semantic graph, just triples, a lot of them. Um, but we may come into a problem um, when we designed a more complex graph that is more powerful. Imagine you have this picture. So this is our mascot cow duck. So cow duck is, is this, this, uh, this little creature here. So. So how would you describe it, right? You can say, cow duck says moo. Cow duck says meow. So, uh, wait a second. So which one is true? There is a contradiction here. And um, then you can, you have to say, oh, cow duck is different from cow duck. So, whoa, 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 what's going on? So here, imagine we have two universe. Um, so one, so they're like sci-fi movie now, right? So parallel universe, so in this universe, uh, cow does say smooth in this other universe, cow does say smell. So um, why do we need that? Why is it useful? Imagine um, Git again, right? So GitHub repo, I think some of you may have, um, you know, GitHub account or have done something with GitHub. You know that people can make a fork, right? So they can make, so make a fork is like making a copy of that repo. For example, pandas. We all know pandas. Um, I can, if I want to contribute to pandas, I can make a fork of pandas. You know, maybe I would uh, do do my changes, whatever, put it of bug fixes, whatever, put it in my version, and then send it, send a PR, right, a pull request, and then ask like the 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 maintainer of pandas saying like, hey, I have this change. Uh, see if you like my version. So 
then at this time, there's two versions, just like two cow ducks. So now it's like, let's say a cow duck should say meow instead of moo. So this is a bug fix. And then you are comparing to the main branch, which is the original pandas. So this is your pandas. Not, well, well, this is a cow or duck. It's, it's not a panda. But anyway, I just find it funny. Um, so you're comparing these two. Um, so then you have to make distinguish between this one and this one, right? So this is kind of a clone of it, but it's kind of different because I have made some changes to it. So that's uh, why, oh, why is go back? So that's why we need quad. So um, quad is a triple with, well, as you can imagine, quad is four things, right? So it's the triple added with one extra element that is um, describing um, what universe it is in, let's say. Uh, we say it's in a different graph. So um, in this picture, so this cow duck is, let's say, is in the main branch, so it's in the main graph. And this cow duck is in the modified branch, which is modified graph. So if you are using triple, so then well, cow duck says moo, cow duck says meow, they are you know, one of them can be true, right? But if you're using quad, so cow that says moo in the main branch, <laughs> cow that says meow in the modified branch. So the last thing in the what branch would be the graph identifier. And that would make, um, so you can compare them, right? Now, now with this quad, then you can kind of compare two different versions. And it's useful when you think about that, if we want something like Git, then this will be very useful because you can compare the two versions. Um, you can also do cross references. Uh, so in case you have built a graph and someone has built a graph, if you want to cross reference, then you can do that. So um, all you need to worry is that every element um, or object or document uh, in your graph is unique. They will have a unique document ID. Um, your friend's graph may have and other document with the same ID, but you can't tell, right? Because you're only governing your own document in your graph. You can make sure that the ID are unique, but you can't make sure that the document in your friend's graph is unique, come, like it's different from yours as well. So that's why you need this graph uh, identifier in case your friend's graph using the same ID, but that's in their graph, so it's different. Okay, so, so far, is that clear? It's coffee time for me again. <laughs> okay, so um, how can we put that into practice? Now we understand um, quad and um, triple. So how can we actually put them together to make a data model? So um, what we used to know, um, uh, the relational database model, which also SQL database or something like that, um, that uh, like I talked about before, they are flat, they are tables, so they have rows and columns, so everything is, you know, um, every cell that if you have used Excel, you know that you have different columns and then columns and row would be the kind of like geometric kind of, uh, you. Yeah, you 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 like yeah, like the x y axis, right? So you have the cross, and then in, in the middle, that's the that's the that's the uh, element, right? So you have rows and columns, and some of the columns could be the key. So they kind of um, you may need them because you have multiple tables. You may want to link different things together. So that's how you can um, cross referencing. Um, just how it works in relational database models. So um, most of the time you can ex uh, extract them in CSV uh, format. So CSV is comma separated values. So I assume that you know, otherwise uh, I could also give you an example. Um, so even if you, for example, your Excel have multiple spreadsheets, you can have each of them, uh, each table as a separate CSV, you can still ex extract them as a CSV. Um, so the structure is very important. So each uh, columns, they need to be um, having a name, you know, a header, and we'll be saying which column, what they mean. Um, also rows, uh, so what does a row mean? It could be a person, it could be a, um, an address, it could be, um, you know, 
just a record of data, a run of one experiment, a result of each test, you know. Um, so a lot of join and aggregation is involved, like, uh, you know, I talked about earlier, um, if you want to cross-reference different things, uh, then you need a, um, a, you know, to join the keys together, right? Um, so I don't, yeah, I, I guess like most of you are familiar with this. Um, a knowledge graph, which um, is different, is consists of triple. And um, we would use uh, RDF, like I said, or sometimes it's uh, XML format. So, uh, well, I think some of you may come across XML. If you open an XML file, it's like, um, it's like HTML. Of a, I don't know, because when I was a kid, I like poking around website and all this stuff. I would, you know, look at the source. So, oh, that's HTML. So HTML is kind of a special type of XML. So that's why it's, um, yeah, it's very, very similar. Um, TTL, um, so it's a, uh, we, we call the tutorial files. Um, so it's another form, kind of, kind of similar to RDF file. Um, JSON LD format. So JSON LD, uh, we use a lot in Terminus DB. So it's a JSON. So I, I guess you may know what is a JSON. So it's almost like a Python dictionary. Um, so it's nested. So everything is nested. Um, you can have, um, yeah, so I, I don't know, like, uh, okay, so this is the full name of, of JSON LD. So yeah, most of the time when I say JSON format, people know what it is, but uh, yeah. So this is JavaScript object notation, okay. Um, uh, so yeah, so data is unstructured. So it's well structured in the sense that you can put, for example, in a JSON file, you can put uh, as much layer as you want. You can have very nested thing, right? So it's not that structured. You can, um, you know, put this part out and then put another dictionary or other JSON in. So it could be like JSON have a property that is also another JSON that's like very, very complex. It's not structured. Um, so um, yeah, so a triple, you know, the 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 um the act of like the carefully the functionality of triple is to paint the picture like we did in the cow and duck use case. Um, so always trip, trip. Yeah, I, I guess you said is it always triple? Yes. Uh, label property graph. Yeah. So I'm mainly focusing on semantic graph right now. So semantic graph, like uh, previous slide said, that is a semantic triple. So um, yeah. So that applies to semantic graph. So of course, there's other uh, graph uh, format out there. The other graph database they may use different um, kind of structured uh, the different model, but uh, this is semantic graph model um, mainly. So yeah. Um, so the good thing about that is that um, if you have a bunch of data that's not well structured. So a very simple example, if your data, let's say you're scraping something from an API data. So a lot of APIs, they love giving you the, the response as a JSON, right? So if you convert that into, uh, let's say pandas data frame, a lot of times you will have a very ugly data frame <laughs> because um, it does, well, you can use some, uh, some methods in, in pandas to flatten it, but a lot of times it got flattened and it may not be the way that you want it to be flattened. And sometimes you have to flatten it multiple times because the JSON is really nested. Um, then it will require a lot of skills, data, you know, data manipulation skills to flatten everything, to make sure that is, you know, all the columns are, are looking beautifully. Um, but you know, if um, if you have like this kind of data from API, if you can just use it as is because it's nested, and then um, you don't have to flatten it, that would be a great advantage because um, sometimes this nested structure is easier to understand. Um, like I said, for example, a person, they may have um, the age, you know, name, title. These are, well, these are quite straightforward, right? Age is number. <laughs> age is just a number. Um, and then a title and all stuff with string. But sometimes you may have uh, the relationship between people. So maybe a person's uh, spouse is another person. So it's not something that you can simply put it there. Um, then sometimes this nested structure could be uh, useful. 
um, also, if you extract the knowledge, so this is more technical. So if you want to extract the knowledge, you only need to tra uh, traverse the graph. So you don't have to, um, let's say you would only, um, so there's a, let's say a family tree. So if you want to find um, my grandmother, you just need to traverse the graph, maybe find my parents. Um, so you go to either father or mother and then find their mother would be my grandma, right? Um, so you just traverse the graph. You don't have to, okay, so I have to join back my parents into uh, this table and then, okay, and then join their parents into the table again. So you have to join it two times. Um, so it could get complex very quickly um, by these joining and aggregations. Um, I think that for those who have some kind of, um, you know, have used SQL um, for, uh, you know, for if you use SQL, so I, I was using SQL mainly when I was um, data scientist uh, at one job, then I'm, I'm so good at SQL at some point that I'm like, I can write thousands of lines of SQL and kind of get the job done purely in SQL, right? Um, I can find some statistical kind of um, property of this graph by just joining an aggregation. But it's kind of, sometimes I've I found that it's like um, unnecessarily complex. <laughs> so um, what if I can just, you know, find the answer by by um, some simple logic, right? So, um, so this is the advantage of having it. So, um, yeah, so like I said, if everything is unstructured, you have the flexibility of do everything you want, but there will be a problem because if anybody can dump anything in this database, then you don't know what they are. So that's why you need some kind of governance. You need some kind of structure, which is a schema. So, um, so <laughs> yeah, uh, well, there's a little bit of funny thing here because uh, what we used to call, so in Terminus DB, when we first designed it, we have objects, documents, and enums, three things. Um, we try to follow what uh, the, the naming usually would be for the semantic um, graph community, but we decided that actually that sometimes quite confusing for developers or new users. Get the slides. Yes, I would, at the end, I would give you a chance to get the slides. Um, but uh, yeah, you, you, will have, you will get the slides. Um, that's the short answer to that question. So, um, so yeah, we have uh, this object documents, enum, try to name it uh, easy for the semantic graph uh, community to understand. But we realized that a lot of potential users and developers, they are not semantic graph nerds, I say. Um, so they may know a little bit about semantic graph and not really totally like diving into it. Um, so we want to make it um, more kind of straightforward or um, more easy to understand for developers. So uh, we changed the naming a little bit. So it's a little bit confusing, but um, we will stick to a new naming, which is, again, it matches with uh, version 10 or about so um so objects documents enum becomes sub documents documents and enums you will see why in a sec so oops i keep clicking the wrong button <laughs> it's okay so objects uh, sub documents so um so um why we name it in sub doc uh, to sub document because um sub documents and documents they are both well they're, they're both kind of objects so you can think of them are both objects, but the only difference a subdocument and document is is that subdocument is supposed to be um, a folder, so it's a collection of things that live inside a document. So here comes the sub in subdocuments. It's um, it's not a document by itself. It's just a collection of properties within a document uh, that is bundled together because. Um, because sometimes it's convenient to do thing, things this way. You want to, um, for example, a person's address. So you have the street name, like the country, the town that they live in. You want to bundle these three like things, the street, the, all, this, all these things that is address related into address kind of category, right? There's a lot of properties about a person, but these properties are specifically for where they live in, let's say. So you bundle them into a address of document. So it's easier to understand, um, but address itself doesn't mean a lot of things because it only makes sense when it's a property of a person because 
then we know what this address is for, right? Because otherwise it's just an address. It's, like, we don't know the meaning, like we don't know the, the, the purpose of why we have that, or because we want to know where a person lives. So, um, so that's why uh, it's called a document and uh, calling it object is a bit confusing because document is also, if you think about it, a document is also an object, but you know, so anyway, um, so yeah, a, a, a document and a subdocument, they are both kind of, uh, in a sense, it's like an object in object-oriented programming or an instance, if you think about Python. So um, Python instance, they are all um, objects, which is a document or subdocument, um, right? So, um, so yeah, that's basically what I'm saying is written here. Um, so yeah, this uh, this uh, slides are designed as a kind of also that was a lecture notes, uh, which I would send it to you all at the end, but you have to give me your email address and stuff, but uh, we will come to that at the end. So um, yeah, this is the example I gave you. So address, uh, you will have to, you know, it's a collection of property of a person that is, um, that's all describing where this person lives, right? So you can, you want to bundle them together as a sub document. So a document is an object. Um, so it's different because uh, it is something by itself is mainly referenced by, um, so it doesn't need to necessarily need to live within another document. It could be referenced by a, um, by an ID. So document always have an ID and they're always referencing um, the ID. For example, like I said, uh, if you have a company and then, uh, so I have a manager. So my, so like, if you look at my property, I'll have, managed by another person. So this person uh, will be referred as an ID. Uh, sometimes it's useful because um, what if I am uh, a one-man band, I manage myself. So the manager, I manage by myself. Then I have to reference myself. If I can't reference myself with an ID, then you can see the problem here because then it's an endless loop, right? I can't embed myself into myself because then I will have to embed myself into myself again and it creates an endless loop, which is not desirable. Um, but with a reference, then it's not a problem because I just say like always, um, you know, managed by this person with this ID. So it's kind of like um, a, a link to, to link the two things together. So um, yeah, so that's the main difference between document and sub documents. Document, it's always embedded within another document. Uh, it also have an ID, like technically, but um, most of the time it's not important because it's just lived with, within um, its host. Um, so you can think of it as just a folder. Um, but a document is a thing of itself. It um, is a reference. If someone wants to reference this document, they have to do it by an ID to refer to it. Oh, I clicked the wrong thing again. Okay. So um, a document will born with a few properties. Um, they are default. Um, so you can see, oh, well, it's confusing. What's going on? Uh, the left-hand side is the old name that we use to, uh, to kind of make it in line with the semantic graph. But uh, nowadays we use the name on the right-hand side because that's more intuitive for developers and um, people who code like you and me. Um, so first thing you have an ID, uh, it's a unique identifier of an object uh, or a document. So it's like a key in SQL. Uh, then a name, a name is a human readable name. And then, um, so it's more flexible. So uh, for this unique identifier, then, you know, like when you type in your email or something, you can't have space in it. Um, you can't do crazy stuff, um, but with the name, because it's human readable, so you can have space, you can capitalize, non-capitalize, you can put emoji in it if you want to, because um, Python support emoji as well, so <laughs> you can name stuff with an emoji if you want to. Um, description will be a longer description. Um, it's, yeah, like, it's almost like a doc string if you think about it. You can have a description explaining what this is. Um, so these three are default. So uh, any documents were born with this three property, assuming that you will have it. Um, but of course you can have other stuff. You can have like a person's title, person's age, person's like more and more different things. So 
enum. Um, for those of you who know SQL, then it's the enum. Uh, it's the same enums. Um, but if you um, if you have never heard about it, think of it as a list of values. So, for example, when you fill in a form, then you will have sometimes you have options, right? Like, for example, which country you lived in, then you have all these country listed, then you have to find your own country. And then, you know, you can't, um, well, sometimes they will have others in case they don't cover every single country in the world. But, but um, yeah, but like, you know, uh, it's a set of values. So it's not a free text. It's not like you can put anything in. It needs to be either one of those. Um, so these three are the three things uh, that would exist in a schema <laughs> in a um, Terminus DB database. So um, all these, so except enum, so documents, they will have properties. So properties is another concept that you have to understand. Um, with the document API, properties is just like an attribute um, in a um, in an object in Python, let's say, but um, but the semantic in semantic graph kind of sense, a property is more complicated. Uh, it will have a range and a domain. So um, a domain is that it means that what this property belongs to. Um, so for example, um, a person has a name. So the name's domain is the person, and the name's range would be what can be put in as a name. So it would be a string. Um, so the other example would be age. So age, domain, again, a person. And then the range would be a integer. So, um, so that's how you describe a property in a semantic kind of sense. But like I said, in uh, the new kind of document API, Terminus DB version 10 or above, um, you can just think of it as an attribute. Um, but uh, you don't have to worry about, oh, domain and range is a bit complicated. Um, well, we change that for you, so you don't have to think that way. But just so you know, when you talk with um, semantic graph people, then when they talk about domain and range of a property, then you know what's going on. Um, so properties, there are two main types. So there are data type property or object property. So data type property would be um, very simple data type like string, integer. Um, well, I think I have a slide to talk about that. Yes, data type will be uh, strings, integer, boolean, uh, float. Uh, float is in Python, but it's decimal in uh, our um, in Terminus DB. Um, it could be something more complicated and un unsigned bytes um, in Python. Like you, you can you know have daytime. <laughs> you know if you import daytime, so uh, it can range from simple things to complex things. But uh, they all have something in common because they're literal data types. They uh, they are not um, an object of itself. They are not another document. Uh, it won't be expanding, having more um, more nested thing inside. It's just um, a value, and it depends on what uh, what data type they are. This value will be interpreted in a different way. Um, an object property, which um, you know is you can think of it as a link between two objects or two documents in this case. Um, so they are um, kind of, if you think in a document API uh, perspective, you think that um, it's kind of embedding or, or referencing another document inside it. So for example, uh, um, my manager would be, you know, managed by would be a, um, a object property. Um, also, you know, address, you know, because it's a sub document, but it's still a, uh, an object property because it's a sub document. Address is a sub document. So, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, don't worry about the slides. Like I said, you would have it at the end. <laughs> so, I present data in a knowledge graph. So, um, time for me to drink coffee. Otherwise, I'll start coughing. So here um, we would do it by example. So we have an example of a data, well, a very simple database um, that is in tabular format. And we can, we try to see how we can put them in a schema. First of all, like 
I would say that when you work with Terminus DB, the first thing is to think about how to, what is the schema? Because the schema is governing how the data will sit within the database, right? <coughs> So um, always schema come first, make your life so much easier if you're deciding on a schema that doesn't change a lot in the future. So <coughs> let's get started. This is a company, right? Um, employee ID for people. Um, these are all like, um, generated fake names, but uh, I'm fascinated by how they all look uh, very real. <laughs> um, and then they have uh, the, the titles. Um, I, I just made them up, right? So there are, there are only two teams in this company, only two managers. So you can make sense out of it, I guess, or all of you, if you're trained it to be working with data, then you know, oh, the manager, so Destiny is the marketing manager. So managing uh, Darcy, so similar to this. Um, yeah, so I, I, I never really think about the agenda or anything. I just generate a bunch of names. So um, if you think that this is a little bit biased, then, well, it's just coincidence. I didn't really think about gender or anything. <laughs> just disclaimer. Um, so um, contact details of employees. So um, so these are all like just address. I don't know why contact number when I use this tool, they give me, uh, this doesn't look like UK number, but well, whatever. Um, but address do looks kind of UK postcode and stuff, which is, uh, yeah, uh, well, I live in the UK, so this I'm more familiar familiar with this. So, um, yeah, but anyway, um, so these are all fabricated people's address and their uh, postcode and contact number. So, um, so this company, why they put these two into two um, tables is maybe because they don't want everybody to have access to this um, personal details. So maybe only uh, a few, um, uh, people can have can see this right so maybe most people can see uh, who is the manager of who but um but most people um can't see the these really personal details here so um okay so this this i think this makes sense i think this is uh what uh well it's a very simplified version of um what uh, people you know uh, will store the data in a company right so now let's think about what documents we have. So um, what do you think when we start modeling? So what would be the documents that we have here? So uh, feel free to type in the chat. Um, yeah. Okay. So employees, yes, that's correct. You are very smart. Um, employees will be the document. So um, we would then um, think about what properties these employees would have. So uh, this is the answer. I don't want you to, um, you know, really like spend a few minutes here. Well, yeah, I know all of you are very smart, but um, yeah, uh, so you can uh, figure it out, I'm sure. I, I trust that you can figure it out yourself. So there'll be um, name, a string, a title, which is a string, team. Uh, well, we would try to use enum here, which, well, you can totally do a string here, but um, I guess uh, for demonstration purposes, we would use enum uh, because we only have two teams. Uh, manager, then, yeah, so now we'll have to have uh, employee within it, right? So this this will definitely be an object property. Um, contact number uh, is, well, because of how funny it looks, I would just put in a string. Also, uh, if contact number is a number, then the first zero usually will be gone, which is not uh, ideal. So don't want that. So I'll just make it a string. I will, um, if yeah, if I'm doing it, I will make it a string, which we will uh, later. So home address, um, I will bundle everything um, in an address object, which is a sub document. And then um, postcode, uh, again, it will be a just a string. So, um, so you may ask about, oh, what about the ID? Well, um, in theory, that is not needed because uh, Terminus DB has the ability to generate an ID for you if you are not providing one. You can also tell Terminus DB what, uh, what logic it could use to generate an ID. For example, I can be like, oh, I know everybody's name is kind of unique. Uh, I won't have another Destiny Norris in 
well, I don't think I'll hire another destiny Norris. What are the chances? So you can say, oh, um, Terminus DB, please use the name as uh, as the yeah, literal uh, key, right? So uh, it, it will do it. So you don't have to worry too much about it uh, in theory. But for demonstration purposes in this tutorial, I would um, use the employee ID in the previous database to um, to manually create an ID for it, um, just to be backward compatible. Let's think about it this way. Um, so, uh, well, schema builder in Terminus DB, which uh, we'll be using the scaffolding tool in the Python client, which uh, I'll be showing you. There's also uh, a schema builder available in Terminus X, which is the cloud version of Terminus DB. So, um, right now, Terminus X is in uh, uh, public beta. So, uh, you know, in the future, the plan is that it will be a cloud service, so it will be a pay service. But right now, because it's in public beta, everybody can go and sign up uh, for free. So, um, so you, that's an alternative for you today. Um, to if you don't want to, if you don't have Docker, if you don't want to run it locally, um, you can go to our website and uh, register an account on Terminus X. Everything is very, very similar. It's just that um, I'll show you what's the difference. But you can do the same thing as I did. And also the advantage will be you would be able to use a graphical tool, a schema builder to do it. Um, uh, I will show you uh, when I do the demonstration. So now it's the pre-flight pre check. So we have hit the uh, one, one, well, I overrun a little bit. So it's about an hour since we started. So I will give everybody 15 minutes uh, to get ready. Um, I also have to get ready uh, for the demos. The demonstration as well. So, um, so if you are use if you want to run locally, uh, go to the Bootstrap. So just GitHub Terminus DB Bootstrap, and then um, just you know uh, that a provider that you have Docker, you can do this. Um, and then the um, yeah, so Docker image you can get it from the Bootstrap, and then a Python client. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can get copy. Yay. So Python client, um, you, you just need to pip install it. Um, the newest version will be available, but highly recommend to have a separate uh, Python environment. This is always a good practice. I tell people to do it. Um, so I can give you, yeah, 15 minutes. So I would uh, post some link that will be useful for you here in this chat. Also, uh, if someone can relay it to Slack, that would be great. So um, yeah, I would just uh, have a 15 minutes break and start again, or maybe slightly less than 15 minutes because I have a run. So maybe we will start at um, uh, 15, after like quarter past. I don't know what time zone you are, but quarter past. Um, yeah, good. So I would uh, try to um, see if I can, oops, sorry. Uh, how, how am I gonna do about this? Yeah, I'll give you some link uh, to do. So this is Bootstrap. So for people who are using Docker, um, those of you, you can use this. Um, otherwise, you can sign up for Terminus X if you want to. So, if you go to the website, you can just click on uh, here um, on the top right hand side. Yes. So, that would, and then um, Python client. I also give you the Python client here. Um, Client the installation, yes, here. So here, um, so you see that I have a terminal open. <laughs> I am in a new uh, directory. So as you can see, I'm in a well, I'm in my development uh, environment, which of course have uh, the Python client installed. Um, also, I hope that um, most of you either have your uh, Docker running or you have a sign up for Terminus X. So, um, oh yeah, make sure you have to uh, verify your email uh, before you start using Terminus X. Otherwise, um, you can't start using Terminus X. So, uh, but today I would demo using Terminus X um, because, you know, it's easier to see because there's the graphical interface here. Um, just give, give you a quick tour, like, you know, you have this to see all the schema. 
Um, but just two other old stuff that I've done with other demos. So let's um, forget about that for a bit. <laughs> um, so we'll do something new um, here. So uh, I have the contact CSV and employees.csv, which uh, I have um, show you there. Um, unfortunately, I don't know how to give you that. Actually, do I have it? Oh, I, I have it somewhere. So I, I have to share a link, which I forgot to share. I'll do it now in the chat. Um, sorry about that. Um, so that should be the tutorial. So um, it's in here. So yeah, today's demo is going to be a short version of all these tutorials. Uh, if you're interested, um, you can you know follow along. Uh, there's you know, a lot of things you can do. So today I'm just gonna maybe touch on um, a few things in here because of time limitation. So I'll give you this link in the chat. Give it to everybody in the meeting. So you have also find these two CSV here. So if you want to follow along, you can just grab these two CSV. Um, yeah. Or if you like, if you, think that I'm going too fast, don't worry, you can step-by-step -step explanation is all here. Um, so it's, it's good that, you know, if you're struggling, don't panic, you can always go to the tutorial and follow along. Um, also, I've made some recording about them willing this as well. They will be available soon. Uh, it's on YouTube, but I haven't linked them yet. So, um, but you will find them uh, in the future. So uh, we have this two CSV, uh, which is exactly what the thing that I've shown you um, but I can also show you here because it's GitHub. So yeah, exactly the same thing that I show you in the slides um, here. Yeah, okay. So, um, but before we do anything, we have to start the project. So uh, once you have the Python client read um, installed, uh, so you can use the terminus db command. So I'll just show you a bit. My typing is horrible, <laughs> especially when I'm demonstrating stuff. I will also have typos and stuff. So uh, feel free to shout at me if I type something wrong and I didn't realize. Um, so uh, there are a lot of commands that's available. So uh, it's a very handy tool if you're using it in junction with Terminus DB. Um, for those of you who decide to use Terminus X, you can always use the, uh, the graph interface here to do stuff. But uh, personally, I really like using the command line interface here. So um, let's start the project. So that's the first first thing you have to do because it needs to connect to, um, to Terminus, right? So uh, start project. So you be asked questions here. So you have the enter project name. So uh, I would do a call it demo workshop. Okay, this is my chosen name. Feel free to choose whatever you like. And um, then you'll be asked an endpoint location. So here, um, if you are using Docker, um, you're running locally, you can just press enter here, which that's the end of uh, this journey uh, to start the project. Then you are all done. But if you're using Terminus X, like I do, um, you have to do a little bit extra more, which is go to your profile. And then you will see that you have given all this information to how to set it up with Python, which is very handy. So the endpoint is actually this one. So uh, yours will be different. You just need to copy it and then paste it here. So, and then you would be asked a team. Um, so my team is here. So everything can be found in this dashboard. So, right. Uh, am I using a JWT logged in? Uh, you will have to say yes if you're using Terminus X. And then do you want to set up the token? So I haven't set it up yet. So um, actually I have set it up before, so I can say no here. But for demonstration purposes, I will say yes and set it up again just for you. <laughs> okay, so I have to get a token. So here um, I would have to say, you know, maybe PyData Global Demo something like that, uh, to generate a new token. Then you would be given the token, which is a super long uh, string. Then you just need to click the little button to copy it and then paste it here. Uh, it won't show it here when you paste it because it's a secret. It's where you, you're not supposed to show to the world. So it won't show in the screen. So now it says that um, the config JSON and schema.py is created. So uh, let me clear the screen and show it to you. So now we have the config JSON and schema.py. So config JSON is, um, is the JSON that store all your configuration to connect to, um, uh, to, to your Terminus DB or Terminus X. 
um, schema.py right now is a um, demo. So if I open it with my um, trusted uh, atom, which is my uh, ID of choice, you can use whatever. Oh, someone asked a question. Any plan to allow, oh, it's really was running time. Ha, huh, oh, pseudo problem okay yeah we have um yeah we we have been uh trying to see what setting is the best for people so yeah i would uh, relay your um your questions to the team because i'm not in charge of that part but uh, i can tell them that actually people want to use it without pseudo so um i would talk to them about it very good very good question um yeah yeah so right now yeah right now it's uh, it's not but uh, i would i would talk to them and see like you know what's going on there um so yeah very good um okay so uh, so this is just a json file holding all the connection and schema.py you see this is just an example so um yeah so it's just an example of um what you can do with schema.py you can do your modeling here um which uh, in terminus x you can always do a um you can always use the uh, gui interface but i Personally, I prefer Python. So, um, so here you can just um, you know, see this example and then change it to whatever your heart, um, you know, <laughs> uh, what's, what, how do people say, uh, what, what you want, what you, uh, your heart uh, delights, you know, yeah, whatever you want. <laughs> so um, so uh, also you can see a lot of doc string here. Um, that's the advantage of um, doing it in Python because you can um, document everything. All this will also be, um, uh, you know, pushed to the back end, pushed to Terminus DB, so uh, it will be stored um, in Terminus DB. So, um, which is good, it will preserve. Uh, okay, so I am going to cheat a little bit because of this uh, short demo. I will try to leave some time at the end so people can ask questions. I can show you this, like how to get slides and all this stuff. Um, so I got to cheat a little bit by copying what I already built. So <laughs> this is uh, what I already built um, for this uh, awesome startup <laughs> that I call it. Um, so I just copy and paste this and I'll explain it later. So uh, we don't need the employee from CSV for now. So let's delete it and save. Okay, so um, this is exactly what we have, uh, you know, what we've talked about in the slides. Um, I will have employees as a document, as you can see. Um, address of the employees would be an address, which is this one. Um, so this is a sub document. Uh, so to declare a sub document, you just have to make a sub document equals to something. It doesn't really matter what it is, but um, you need to have a sub document flag here. Um, so the address will have all these properties that's related to an address, the postcode, the street, street number, and town. Um, you can also add docs train to describe what these are in case this is not clear to people. Um, team would be an enum. Um, so you have a marketing and IT. Um, yeah, so but all these details, if you follow the example, then the example will give you more detailed explanation of this. Um, so, uh, it, yeah, it's a little bit, oh, wow, a lot of information overload for now. But if you are really using it, then you can just look at the example schema, then you you would see more like kind of oh, what how, how to create enum and other stuff. Um, so we have the address for employee, contact number will be a string, um, manager would be an employee. I make it optional because the managers don't have manager, like uh, Destiny is the manager, so sh she won't have a manager. Um, Name is a string. Team would be an enum team. So all this, uh, well, I put it in quotation in case I declare it afterwards. Then, uh, otherwise Python won't like it. They will say Python would be like, oh, team is not defined or something like that. So, uh, put them in quotation. So these are all kind of um, uh, type hinting uh, in Python. So. Uh, in case you haven't used type hinting before, uh, there's a lot of resources online talking about that. So um, you can also learn a little bit about that. Um, so this is basically how it works, okay? Um, you get used to it very quickly uh, because this is very, very Python, <laughs> okay? So uh, this is the schema that we have done. Um, so we know that this is going to be, to be like this. So let's go back to the uh, terminal. So what we will do now is to commit our, uh, our schema. So 
uh, just type commit, I can also add a message just like, this is very similar to those of you who use Git, right? So, oh, this sounds familiar. So it is. Um, so uh, it will be uh, creating schema, something like that. Uh, this is just whatever message you like uh, that you will understand in the future. Yes, type hinting. Oh, someone already give you uh, some resources, which is great. Uh, yeah, it's amazing that we are self-helping. Uh, like we are helping each other here. So uh, yeah, if someone can relay that to Slack, that's good because someone may want to see it in the future. Okay, so let's do this. And then we have created a database because uh, we haven't connected to uh, Terminus X in my case yet. So you can't see it in my dashboard, uh, but now you can see it if you refresh. Um, and then it will well, it create a database and then create a schema. So let's see uh, here in my dashboard. So if I now refresh, you will see I have three uh, database here now before it's two. So if you go to demo workshop, which is a new one, you look at the schema. So this is what we have built in Python. Um, so you can, again, you can modify and change it um, here with this GUI interface if you're using Terminus X, but uh, well, for me, I, I prefer Python anyway. So, so sub documents are green. So address is green and then uh, employee here, right? So enum, so this is oh, very, very clear to illustrate. That's why I want to, uh, yeah, that's why I want to show this um, in Terminus X, but it's perfectly fine if you do it in Terminus DB. It's most of the stuff I do it, you know, in this GUI interface anyway, uh, in this uh, CRI interface anyway. So. Our next step is to uh, insert the data. So um, again, I got to do uh, what I'm very good at, which is cheating. <laughs> um, so here um, I would go to um, my already. So this is this is what I just shared with you uh, in the tutorial GitHub repo. So you will find the insert data.py. Uh, so this is what I've written um, to insert data with a Python script. I just read the CSV. Um, you can also use uh, pandas to read in the CSV if that's more convenient for you. Um, I built a tutorial using just the CSV um, library because um, not all of you will have pandas, but I assume because you're, you know, uh, from you're attending Pi Data Global, I assume that you love pandas and you have pandas. So um, you can use pandas, it's, it's okay. And then you just, um, you know, uh, for this CSV is a little bit tricky because like then you have to you know create some dictionaries and store stuff there with uh, the employee ID as the key and then uh, so yeah I I store them uh, here and then so the, the ID will be the key of the dictionary and then I construct the address so this address object I want to highlight this a little bit so this address object is just import from the the schema. Okay, so the, uh, the advantage of having this schema.py here because they are declared as a Python class, you can actually uh, import them um, to use. So I would just copy this so it's easier. I don't have to switch between these two. So I would call this insert data.py. I'll just uh, create this file first. So, um, yeah, so. Uh, so you can just use it as a class in Python and then create an instance, which is, you know, a document in, Py uh, in Python. So um, it's very, you know, uh, I, Marie, I, I, I quite like it. Uh, I think Marie, it's quite beautiful. Excuse me, Marie has a question. She says, oh, yes. I'm using Terminus DB and my input location 127.001 ah. with port 6363 <laughs> and shows a coming soon page. Yes. Um, so uh, I'm using Terminus X. So Terminus X is a, um, so it come with a dashboard. Okay. So you can do this uh, exactly like what I'm doing, but if you're running it locally, um, it doesn't come with a dashboard yet. Okay. So that's why I said that um, you can totally just follow with this kind of um, command line interface. It works just fine it's just that you won't have the visualization here like like i'm doing uh i'm using terminus x because then i can visualize and show it to you but uh if you uh, are running it locally uh, you don't have the visualization yet so you, you you can only follow here but there's some other commands that let you uh have a look at what your schema is so if you type terminus db um all docs schema 
then you would see the schema uh, as a JSON <laughs> coming back. Uh, or if you want to see what your schema has, uh, you can just hop over to uh, schema.py. It should be you know, a, a representation of this. But if you want to verify that it's in the back end, you can just type uh, terminus DB or docs schema. This will show you that, oh, this is you know, what it looks like in the back end. So it's just a, a little bit you know, nicer to have a visualization in terminus X. Um, otherwise, it's just working the same. Okay. So yeah, coming soon, that's exactly what, uh, what is supposed to be right now, because the dashboard is not available on uh, for the local version yet. It will be. Uh, we have plans for that, but uh, not right now. Okay. So insert data again, coming back here. Um, so this is just like data managing. Um, you know, if you feel more comfortable using pandas, use panda. Uh, it's just that I will have to create a lot of address object uh, to hold the addresses. <laughs> so all these attributes, so you can just um, assign it like this. Okay. Um, so employees, similar thing. I have to create employee object. Uh, now they have the ID that I said that I would construct them manually, which I did it here. Um, so I have, uh, you know, the employee ID would be the first. I, so yeah, it's well, pandas, then you can see what it is. But like now it's just always oh, the first thing in the row, which is the ID. Um, I just, um, so this is uh, how a ID would be like. Um, so it need to be the type of the object and then slash and then whatever uh, identifier you use. Um, so I construct it manually because uh, it's, clearer in the tutorial, so you know what it is. Um, also backward compatible, so you can compare it back to the CSV. Um, also, um, yeah, right now the auto-generated ID does not work so seamlessly between the Python client and the backend. Uh, we have plans to make it more seamless, but it's not there yet. So um, so manually constructing it is, uh, is my favorite way to do it for now. Um, and then also there's a little, little, uh, uh, detail here that um, the managers uh, I stored the the mapping between the employee and the manager with the ID separately because the problem could be the um, my manager may not be created as an object yet because uh, that's the limitation of a CSV everything needs to be done in sequence so um, my manager could be not be created yet so um, I just so that's why I just store the mapping for now. And once all the employees are created, so I store them all in the dictionary, then I can, so it's an employees dictionary. So after I store them all, then I can link my manager to my property. <laughs> okay. Um, so this one, I need to change it because uh, I'm using Terminus X. So what I got to do, I got to copy my thing in the uh, config.json uh, to change it up. So I'm using this. So I am, so... I am using this following and I'm not using this. So um, demo workshop. Yes, uh, my team is Terminus DB community. Okay, so I'm using this. And then, um, so if you're using locally, uh, just you know use this, make sure you change the name of the DB to the thing that you want, you set up before. Um, and then the client, so, okay, the so client is the, it's just a, a object in a Python client. When you uh, create it, you need to put an endpoint here and then you use connect to um, basically lock in. So also tell the client which database you want to connect to. Um, if you're using it locally, uh, the lock-in is very simple. You don't have to put anything. You just need to say what DB you're using. Um, and then you can do the client insert document. So I have every employee object store in employees dictionary, right? So they will be, all be the values. So I make, so I call all the values and then make them into a list uh, because this needs to be a list. And then I have a commit message, so adding for employees. So this one hopefully should work. So let's try. Um, okay, so no warning, which is a good sign, I always say. <laughs> so let's have a look at the dashboard to see if we have anything. So, okay, so go to demo workshop and then look at the documents. So we have four employees 
here, right? So this is uh, the GUI, how it looks like. You can see everything in the table. But otherwise, if you are using a local version, you can also verify that you have all the stuff by using all docs like this. And then it should come back in the JSON format. So yeah, now you have done it. <laughs> so yeah, this is the little demo that I show you. So if you're interested to learn more, um, again, the tutorial is available. There's six lessons. It's going to be fun to play along. Um, uh, if you found any bugs in it, please report it because um, I have just finished writing them. I, I have already been debugging by trying it many, many times, but someone always finds something, you know. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, if you find any problems, please, uh, please, you know, um, open an issue or pull request. Uh, you're very welcome to do that. Um, yeah, so uh, I think that's the demo. So let's go back to the slides. I, I have a few things at the end for you. So let's go. Um, okay, we have done this. So um, Terminus X, I've shown you. So this is what also this is not very good. So that all the texts are a bit funny. Oh, I think I captured a picture. That's why. But um, yeah, so uh, Terminus X, I've just shown you uh, the main difference right now is that it's, well, it's host on cloud. So you don't have to get the Docker image. Also, it got uh, some kind of visualization that is available to you uh, that's not available in the local version yet. Um, so uh, now it's in public beta, so everybody can sign up for free. Um, but it's a cloud service, so of course, you know, um, cloud service normally would cost something. Um, so, uh, so it's normally a paid service, but right now you can sign up for free, so uh, you're encouraged to do so as well. Um, so uh, to sum up, so in this workshop, we have learned a lot of things. Um, so there's an hour-long lecture telling you about, like, you know, um, what is knowledge graph? What is a semantic knowledge graph? What's the building block of a semantic knowledge graph? What's the difference between a knowledge graph and a SQL database? Um, and then we try to have a little bit example of thinking how to remodel some kind of CSVs into um, build a schema in the knowledge uh, in terms of DB. Um, so uh, I've shown you a little bit of um, how, you know, it can be done uh, with, the, the Python client with a few commands with uh, Python scripts. Uh, also, um, you you know you feel free to explore the tutorial yourself if you want to. Um, so uh, yeah, if you want to learn more, so this is kind of um, a, a a kind of a trial of uh, running workshops like this kind of format. Uh, it's more like um, a lot of you know, information based because like I have done a lot of tutorial in the past, but this this one I think is the one that have a lot of like information, lots of knowledge <laughs> for knowledge graph. So um, uh, in the future, we may um, kind of publish a course. Uh, we actually, because part of my job is to educate people, right? I educate developers. So uh, that's something that I really want to do. Um, but uh, we are Right now, as a trial, we run all these workshops at different conferences. So uh, your feedback is very, very welcome. So um, these are all like how you can contact with Terminus TV and you know find us and you know get in touch, ask us questions in the future. Um, so uh, yeah, your opinion is highly, highly um, valued. So I have this form, which um, so. If you don't want to give me any opinion or you're busy, that's fine. I understand everybody's busy. You can just click on this link and um, you know, I can show you the, the form. So it's just a quick form. So you can, the bare minimum is just tell me um, your name and then your email address and then uh, just a few kind of things. Do you want to be contacted? And then what I'll do is that I will give you a batch, um, a batch that you nowadays you see everybody's doing it, right? Um, the link, yes, yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, everybody is um, copying address. So yes, everybody is uh, sharing batches nowadays on LinkedIn. So um, I will give you a badge. Um, actually, we, we pay for this service to be able to issue badges. So we want to give out as much as possible. So it's kind of like a online swag. I can give you a badge that you can share on LinkedIn saying that you know how to mod, like model graph um, data, which is great. Um, also, I would... Uh, share the, um, the slides with uh, those of you who um, who sign up. I'll send you an email uh, personally um, as well. 
because this uh, this PDF is quite wordy, it's quite you know uh, heavy. So I don't know whether I can um, so Canva. I can't just. I think I have to export as PDF. So I would I prefer to send it to you via email. Um, so yeah, just just fill in the form. I'll send you the email after maybe a few days. I'll open this for a little bit. Um, I will open this form for maybe um, a, a week or so. Uh, so be patient. I will send you the the the. Um, I would give you the batch. Also send you the the, the slides uh, after because I know that it's recorded. I don't know whether it will be. Yeah, maybe Quick I would question. be a little bit able to watch online. Yeah. Quick question: Is it workshop ten o two or ten? Oh, sorry, that, that's wrong. Why is it wrong? Sorry. Sorry, that's that's wrong. Ignore that one. Uh, I don't know how to delete it, but uh, yes, I, I don't know either. <laughs> yeah, it's uh sorry, it's ten twenty eight. Yeah, it should be uh ten twenty eight. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, someone okay. already fixed it. Thank you. I don't know why it's like so weird. I think I, I thought I've changed it. Um, yeah. So okay, let let me give that a try and make sure that works because you know, ha. Huh. Okay, yeah, it should work. So um. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. Why is it different? Ah. Oh, okay. So, huh. Strange. Um. But anyway. Yeah. So the use the ten to h one, please. I think that one is the right one. Um. Yeah. So. Uh. And then, of course, you're welcome to give us feedback. I. I really. I will look at them. So please. <laughs> um. Yeah. What else? I think that's it. Uh, ask questions. Um, and run Python as even ah. There is a new question saying yes. When contact I run me. Is Python. Hmm? Hmm? Yes. Okay. <laughs> or you want to show me now is fine. Uh, but I think that in Slack maybe you won't feel the pressure of showing it live. Um. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be on Slack uh, for during the conference time. Um, so yeah, feel free to ask questions. Um, yeah, also tomorrow, I think I have a talk uh, more about like related stuff as well. So you're welcome. Uh, integration of AWS, um, not so sure. Uh, the, <laughs> the best is to ask the team. Uh, yeah, AWS, I think we don't have that uh, in mind, but because we have all the clients available. So I think it's not too difficult to build something to work with AWS uh, because we have the Python client. Like if you have some services that, you know, run Python scripts, that is very, very easy to work together with AWS, I can imagine. But um, so I, I don't totally understand like what integration mean in your question. Um, so, uh, but we are happy, happy to chat about it. Uh, if you, if you come and join our discord or our team, or, you know, or we can even talk further if you uh, contact me, um, person like, you know, directly. So, um, yeah, we have some more time. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, if you can just give me as much detail as possible um, on Slack, I would try to um, understand what's wrong. Um, sometimes it's just that it could be, uh, you know, um, there may be something happening in the in the in in the schema. Maybe I I don't know. Marketing, yeah. So I for for what you show me the attribute error marketing it. It's probably something wrong with the schema, I guess. I can imagine. So, but yeah, if you if you share to me, I'm happy to have a look. Also, um, you may want to try like uh start over step by step with this because this uh, will provide you more detail about like what's going on and stuff. So, um, yeah. Um, another question from yes, Kotadrina or short J. Mm -hmm. In terms of performance and size, is it better than a relational database? Yes, for performance. So, um, well, I kind of, well, I, so I think the backend team will give you a better explanation, but what, from what I've heard over the years of what they're talking about, because we have a store that's built with Rust. Uh, so it's very efficient. Um, also things are stored in layers. 
So when you make a query, you um, there's a way of like how they, you know, they optimize. So it's it's very very complicated. Uh, the backend team can give you more information. So um, there's a a way of like we will have new things coming in, right? So each commit, it will be layers on top of each other. Normally, when you query stuff, you would traverse the graph and find the answer. But there is some kind of magic that they do, I don't understand, that like that you can optimize it. You know, maybe you can create kind of some kind of a shortcut uh, in some layers that you can uh, query it quicker. So, um, yeah, so storage-wise is very efficient because it's in Rust, it's uh, really compact. And for the query, you can optimize it to make it quick. But uh, if you're really interested, uh, you know, join the Discord and talk to the backend team. They can give you a better explanation of everything. They're very passionate about making it um, as efficient as possible, of course, because, um, you know, it's something that we are not, you know, doing it for fun. It's, it's, well, we, it's a product that we want to make sure that it's uh, useful for people. So. I hope to answer the question. <laughs> I don't have too much uh, information to provide, but yeah. Thank you very much, Czech. Um, by the way, Czech is a Python Software Foundation Fellow since 2021, so congratulations for that. And she has a Python podcast called Mid Meat Pie. She also has a follow-up talk uh, tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. UTC uh, in the talk one track on talking specifically about turning those lovely Python, uh, lovely pandas data frames that a lot of us use into semantic knowledge graphs. So feel free to check that one out as well. Thank you very much, Jack. And you can reach her as well on our Slack channel and hopefully on Gather as well. Thank you all. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on your time. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>